Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. Uh, this is a fairly, fairly straightforward case designed to just give you a better sense, better intuition about atelectasis. Atelectasis simply means volume loss. And if you look at this chest radiograph, do you see anything abnormal? Not really, nothing very striking to me. Uh, maybe if you look in the left retrocardiac area, maybe, maybe you can imagine something, although I grant you it's hard to say because here you have the aortic descending segment. And this is an area where we also see prominent vessels just coming off the left main pulmonary artery. So it's typical to see vessels here. So this is not something I would ever pick up anything abnormal on in terms of this chest radiograph. Let's go to the chest CT lung windows. Going from the top down. Now you can see the kind of thing that would be easily missed on a chest radiograph, even though it could be very significant. How would you describe this abnormality? An area of opacity in the left base posteriorly or posteromedially. That's all I have to say. An area of opacity. It's white. It's opacified. And it's comparable to the attenuation of soft tissue. Uh, it's, it's even denser than muscle. It's nearly as dense as the vascular, the vascular enhancement we're seeing in vessels and cardiac chambers. So what are we looking at then? So what we have then, if you go through the left hyalur region, and this is a good exercise to go through. If there's any abnormality identifying you should know the lobes and the segments very well. So here, if we go down from the trachea, and you see that we're at the level of the carina here, and then it branches left and right, main stem bronchus. Okay. Now, as we go farther from there, you see the left main stem bronchus, you're getting off to the hyalur region there. So what will we see arising from the left main stem bronchus? The first branch off is going to be the left upper lobe pulmonary artery. And since there's only two lobes on the left, then that means the other branch goes to the left lower lobe. And look and see how well aerated these bronchi are or, or not. It looks like they're air-filled. doesn't really look terribly, terribly tight in here. Right around here, though, something seems to be happening. You can look there and see if you can find continuity a little bit. So I have the sense that there's probably some little obstructive process here, whether it's just fibrosis or mucus plug or potentially a little tumor, but I don't see a tumor there, so I think that's less likely. And then as you get down to the lower lobe, you see not only this area of opacity, but you can see the pattern of branching bronchi, bronchioles here, uh, that are supplying portions of the segments of the left lower lobe. Now it's somewhat interesting that if you go up higher here, and you see this is all left upper lobe, and you go down, it looks like we're aerating a portion. I think this is major fissure there. So some of the left lower lobe is getting aerated. Now it is possible to have little communication between lobes, little pores that'll connect the lobes. Actually, over on this side, you can see a fissure. What would that probably be? Which one? We're going up, and it's going to the back of the right hemithorax, so that looks like it is the major fissure. Can we see the minor fissure on the right? Well, it's in the plane of imaging, or nearly so, on axial images. So what we're looking for is where the density of the 
vessels and the markings of the lung suddenly get less dense. So let's start from the top, go down and see right here? See how right about there you don't see very many big vessels? You go above it and you do, and then you go below it and you do. But right at that level, so I would think this is probably the right minor fissure. So looking back down here, we have these bronchioles, small segmental bronchi that are still getting some air, but the lung is atelectatic. This part of the left lower lobe, most of the left lower lobe, is atelectatic. That means it has lost volume. That means the air containing volume, which you see here, that air is nearly entirely all in alveoli, those pockets. And if you have volume loss, this is what it means. It means those alveoli are, to one extent or another, collapsing. And when you have an opacity this dense, it's clear that you have pretty much complete atelectasis of the involved segments of the left lower lobe. So this looks like it's considerable atelectasis, and it means that what you're looking at here is just the tissue, the vessels and the alveolar walls and the supportive structures for the lung and the air that was in the alveoli that is in the alveoli here has all been squeezed out or has come out for one reason or another. So that is left lower lobe atelectasis. Pretty dramatic example. Look at it here on the coronal images. Even more dramatic. Here you can see a part of the major fissure. You can see that the major fissure does go up pretty high. And all of this is left lower lobe, and as we pointed out, a portion of the left lower lobe is spared. Now when the alveoli collapse, the bronchi often do not, because they have supportive structures and cartilaginous components in their wall that give it some resilience to collapse, a little in structural integrity, whereas the alveoli just have these thin, thin, wispy walls, and they very readily collapsed. So that's why you can see air in the bronchi as in this case. Okay, look at another point here. Look at the density of vessels and compare them on both sides. I know I'm a little bit off-center here with, with this image. Let me see if I can center it a little bit better. If you look, here's a good example right there. You see how the vessels are spread out more on this side than that side? Let's go down and see if that holds true. Now look at this level. They're spread out more here than they are there. See if I can, there we go. More spread out on this side than that side. That is a reflection of the atelectasis. Now when one lobe collapses, as in this case, you will lose some volume in that side of the chest. But to a large extent, depending on the patient and the level of functioning of the, their lungs, the other lung can take up some of the slack and become more hyperinflated. So look at the difference between these two. So you've seen this pronounced difference, left lower lobe atelectasis, nearly the whole left lower lobe collapsed and not so on the right. And as a result, the left upper lobe has become hyperinflated. And you can see that as a greater degree of spreading out, greater degree of spacing between the vessels. And even on this level, you can see how it's even a little darker here than it is between the vessels because you're pulling the tissue apart, and so the little walls of the alveoli and the microstructures of the lung are farther apart. So that kind of gives you an intuition for the kinds of things that, that you can see. You can see hyperlucency in a, the remaining portion of a lung if one of the lobes has collapsed, 
And you can also see that the volume of this left hemithorax is less than on the right, the whole way down. Now the left lung may be a little smaller anyway because of this part going over onto the left side, but not to this extent. And so some of what we're seeing is the effect of mediastinal shift to the left that also accompanies left lower lobe volume loss. Okay, let's see if we have some nice illustrations of anatomy on this. All right, which side, which lung are we looking at here, left or right? Well, I think you can tell it's the left, not only because you see the atelectasis that we're looking at, but the big old heart is sticking over there pretty prominently. Okay, so here we're going off to the far left. Now we're coming medially. Medially. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, look at this. This is a huge amount of volume loss. Is it really all in the left lower lobe? Kind of hard to tell. Here it looks like it's going to a lesser degree up into a portion of the left upper lobe. Let's see if that really is true. Follow it back here. Make sure that that really is the left upper lobe bronchus. So here's the left main stem bronchus. We follow it here. Yeah, that's got to be the left upper lobe bronchus, and that's the left lower lobe. Remember, it's not that it looks like that. It's the, all about anatomic relationships. And Here's left upper lobe, left lower lobe. So there is some degree of opacity around the left upper lobe, but much less than what we're seeing around the left lower lobe. And if you look over um, the right side, <clears throat> see if we can see that right minor fissure. There's some other mild findings there in the right lung. And I'd say this is probably it right here. It's very subtle. And often you can't really see any line where the minor fissure is because there's no thickening of the pleura there. It usually shows up best if there's at least a little bit of fibrosis. So don't really see it very well, but I can tell pretty well that that's probably where it's located. <clears throat> and here, if we go out this way, and I say, well, what is this then? What's that line? I think that is the left major fissure. And it's way down. It's pulled down because of the volume loss in the left lower lobe. And this is that one portion of the left lower lobe that seems to be getting a reasonable degree of aeration. So all of this just to give you some intuition for what atelectasis is, that it's nothing complicated. It just means loss of volume. The loss of volume occurs because of collapse of the alveoli. And you'll often get mediastinal shift to the side of atelectasis. And you'll also get sometimes a spreading out and hyper aeration of the, the portion of the lung that is not atelectatic. I think it's a good basic skill to be able to trace these bronchi and to ask yourself, let's see, is this all left lower lobe? And follow it and see that it's surrounding the branches coming off the left lower lobe bronchus, whereas this is left upper lobe. And we looked at that in the other plane just a moment ago. And there's very little in the way of abnormality associated with that. So on the other plane, it really looked like there was a significant amount of left upper lobe involvement. But here you can see that that is just a fake out. Because as we go up here, most of the opacity is really posteriorly and medially positioned. So this is pretty much exclusively or nearly so left lower lobe volume. Okay, that's all for now.